Yes. That, you can say that. So and then you wouldn't even have to bring it up. What I was trying to get from her is to figure out exactly why she wanted him to talk versus text. Because saying that to him, that that doesn't really mean anything. If someone were to say that to me, I would be like, whatever, I'm a text because that's what I like. But if you're saying, I want to know you, I want to get to know you more, I want to know what's going on, you know, in your surroundings. But your tone and, and, right, and all of that. that. It really, I think that so, the voice really does. And, you know, we know some of those slick dudes mm-hmm. that have that little slick tone that can get, get the get the draws and stuff. Oh, well, you just, <laughs> I, I can't stand you. my pearls, where my pearls at? I can't stand you. But I do but, feel, I know. feel like. Also, I said, you know, don't just go for the phone conversation. Go for the date. So if you're really saying what you want and you want to go on a date. Why are we laying it out here? Don't just say, I just want a phone call. What, what do you really want out of this? Or do you want it to move faster? Do you want it to move? You know what I mean? And so. Oh, I've never determined the pace. Yeah, the pace was kind of slow. got to be quick with it, boo. <laughs> yeah, the pace was kind of slow. Pick it up, pick it up. <laughs> right. And you don't want to say that to someone like, okay, what's next? And then I feel like with text. That junk can drag out, and that's for what, her. yeah, and that's what she was feeling like. like. How do you ever turn the corner? Mm-hmm. I don't see it. I don't know how you turn the corner. So I think that was the goal was to make it to address, not without saying that whole forbidden. What are we doing? Oh, <laughs> but that the question. whole like, what is this? Like, do I need to be putting more effort into this, or right. can I just move to the next? Because a text is effortless. If we're gonna be right, honest about girl, it. she's probably gonna be celebrating when she hears your opinion on stuff. Because I was like, girl. girl, it doesn't matter. He could text you. That is not true, though. <laughs> but if she wanted more, I would be like, bump the phone call. Let's have a date. Because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get to know you. I agree. Like after she, I think after she sees how the response is to that request, mm-hmm. it shows kind of where his interest level is. Because if he's willing to say. All right, I'm gonna start calling her every day mm-hmm. right after work. Like that'll be our talk time or whatever. Right. Um, or before I go to bed. Whatever it is, you mm-hmm. know, if he's willing to commit that out loud time. Because I'm gonna tell you, sometimes on school nights I do prefer to text because I just I can't talk Same. anymore. Same. You know, I'm like I've been talking to all dog on day. Yeah. That's a different type That's different. of That's different. feel. We're not because courting. Dudes will if they trying to spend time with you. They will get to you and fall asleep, but they're still trying to be near you. That's right. So, and she's experienced that too. So she's like, what in the world is this? What do I do? So anyways, I love that. That's like, you know, that's our little peek into the dating world. So we gave our marriage opinion about texts and calls, but I'm glad we were able to experience someone on the other end who's like, what do you do? What is that? I have always kind of, you know, with my little sis... Um, I always, I used to talk to her about that all the time. I'm like, so is that acceptable? Is that the only way you communicate text all the time? I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think it has to be a mixture, honey. I also feel like there's a difference between the DM. Now this is something that's totally millennial. The DM versus Uh when do you move from DM to texting and then texting to phone call because it's three levels there. Oh, shoot. That's too many. Right. That's like, do you many. really want to give your real number to this random person or oh, is it like yeah. some people even set up like fake phone numbers where they can text that way but they're not really getting their real phone number yet because they oh, don't that's know. Too much. It that's is too a lot. Much. Do you remember when we were in college where that rejection line? No. It was like a number that you could give people oh. and it, <laughs> <laughs> and they would call it like that's, that's a the, troll. That's a troll line. Well, it would be like you would give them your number, oh. the bugaboo, your number right, at right. the club. You know, the bugaboo at the club. The one that has the phone with them, so they can call and see if it rings right immediately. Girl, <laughs> that that joker. Just <laughs> always so you got all the answers. I've been through that though. Mm. Um, oops. So um, anyway, it used to be a number that you dial and it would be like, you've reached the rejection hotline. Oh my God. This is a fake number, blah, blah, blah. You didn't know about that? That's hilarious. I bet Val knows. (laughs) Probably so. I probably gave it to him. Uh, Whatever. (laughs) No, you didn't. Oh my God, I'm just kidding. That is so cool. I'm glad we talked about that. So to wrap up that little section, um, we... I need to ease up a little bit on the boo.
Okay, as a recap, <laughs> let's just get this straight. Yeah. One, I need to ease up on that, doctor, just a little bit because you are a perfect example that real work can be happening when you're ignoring our texts. And number and I don't think it's really ignoring. Y'all see it and you keep going. That's ignore. <laughs> okay, we're not gonna rehash all this. Okay, okay, okay. Go and ahead. number two, why are you leaning close to the mic? Do answer to the, the doggone text. <laughs> that's the, that's number two. That's your that's your summary. Answer the text, not the seventh text, <sighs> making us look crazy, like we got issues. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> when I look at my phone, and I see all those missed calls and texts. I feel so bad, but it takes me back to like. But y'all are oppositional defiant. <laughs> You in debt, doctor, and so I'm not OD. You are. <laughs> you definitely are. Okay. So. Well, my suggestion for those who like to be constantly talking on the phone and getting responses is just to like you know ease up, like you said, and just assume the best. Like, don't assume the worst. I like that. Assume like I'm gonna this take is that. real work and this is something like take yourself out of it and just think about them. That sure is hard, but yeah. I know, I know, and I'm gonna but do you, better. Did you do your your summary reflection on what you're gonna hmm? <laughs> <laughs> me? me? <laughs> I'm going. I am. I'm going to work really hard at trying to text him before he texts me. Like I just so it's a game to you competition <laughs> always but that's good y'all operate in that i mean try to text him before he texts me and then also if he clearly i mean based on we didn't even talk about what happened last night but based on what he said that is an expectation of married people that you know when one calls the i other answers. agree so i'm guessing that's uh something that we forgot 15 years ago to put in the marriage vows that if he calls me i need to answer so I guess I'll be doing that now after 15 years. So, but bump that because <laughs> you were answering the phone in the beginning. So why now? Because you because we weren't really texting like that. I mean, our cell phones weren't even like texting. You don't people. respond to text anyway. Hmm? So you answered the phone back then because there were no texts. So now, but you don't answer the text. Yes, I do. Okay, can't talk right. <laughs> Now he's gonna be so mad when he hears this. He's just like you are right now. He's not gonna be mad. He's gonna say Keisha really is my sister. Oh Lord! <laughs> Moving on, teacher talk. Oh, okay. So, gosh, I'm real quiet. I'm gonna let you start this off. Okay. I'm. Can I talk? Can I start it off with? The August Alcina concert I went to. You can. Can you explain to the listeners who that is? Oh my God. Okay, for you millennials, you know who August Alcina is. He's a baby. He's like 24, 22. I don't know. Um, and I ended up going to his concert in Atlanta for um, not no apparent reason, but one of the ladies I work with is his mm, handler <laughs> mom situation mentor I think is kind of what I call it and they have a very close relationship so she's like August is coming we need to go so I was like okay let's go to his concert mm -hmm. and like she, so she says we were like all hesitant about going backstage because I'm like mm, I didn't really know I know a couple songs that he sings I don't really like I'm not a fan of his so I'm like I don't really have to experience that she said as soon as she went back there, he was like, where are your teacher friends? Like, he wanted to meet us, like, to figure out or thank us for coming. I don't know what it was, but so sweet. So sweet. So sweet, August. Um, I've heard so much about you. I'm going to tag you in this. <laughs> Share with all your fans. What we were scared about was going there and, like, being with our students because they love him. Like, yeah. they're like, but we didn't see them. We saw crowds of people that looked our age. I think all, oh. the, I think all the teeny boppers were up at the front because we were kind of chilling in the back. Like, yeah, they were probably trying to get a handshake they were, or yeah. a hug or a kiss or something. And he is very talented. And I love going to concerts where if I don't know your music, um, August, like the month, Alcina. She's trying to Google it. <laughs> 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 so
So, um, I'm not, sometimes I like to know all the songs of the artists that I go to see. So I was pleasantly surprised by his talent. He's very good, a very good artist because I was enjoying his music, even though I didn't know all the songs. I was like, okay, I'm digging this. Anyways, my question is about teacher talk is how do you determine how you develop those relationships? I have students also who are almost grown now. Are you trying to watch something on August right now? Okay, that's him. Isn't it Chris Brownie? Chris Brownie. <laughs> Chris Brown. Um, there's another one that he's kind of in the same category with is um, Tiller, Bryson Tiller. They're all, we don't really know, but the the young ones do. <laughs> Ask Bree about them. She knows. <laughs> she knows. Um, but the question is, is how do you develop those kind of relationships? Do you really want to have those kind of relationships? Um, how does that end up happening where that person becomes yours kind of, and you don't, you have that bond and it's like a mother, it's like a mentor. Let me help you. How does that even start? Who, how do you determine who it is? Now I can tell you my mentees that were girls have always chosen me. And I'm always like, Ugh. there's only one that for sure. I'm like, okay, we chose each other kind of, but most of the time it's like, you're going to be my mentor. Really? Yeah. But those ones never really work out. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> because they're always like these really, really bad girls. And then I end up chasing them and then they snatch away from me and want to skip still. Yeah. Like it's, it has to be mutual. I think. I agree. Okay. So what do you think? I don't know how I choose them. Um, it kind think of just... about how your girl, who is a part of our Sweet Ten Sunshine crew now, like how did that even come about? Right, but that's what I was getting to. Um, I just come... you don't have to say that's what you were getting to. I was because no. you keep cutting. Get to the topic. My taking too thoughts. long. Take it too long. Off. Oh gosh, I gotta go. <laughs> I'm looking at my watch. <laughs> the fact that I don't care. <laughs> um, so the person, my little mentee, who's now someone I consider a friend. Yeah, she's grown. A How bestie, she? a sister. Um, she's 25 now. Okay. So like August, Alcina. That's right. Okay. So... I taught her, but I also coached her red ball. Yeah. Then I ended up coaching her for cheerleading, like yeah. the school cheerleading. So that little crew of my cheerleaders kind of ended up being my first little group of girls. Mm-hmm. But why her I kept more than me. others? Because I don't she know was the rest possessive. Of them. Oh. And she was just like, uh-uh, she's mine. <laughs> oh. Back then in mm-hmm. sixth. In seventh grade, eighth, nineteenth, eleventh, twelfth, like she was very, because there was another girl, right, that I was close to, and she was actually the other little girl was actually closer to me as far as at that present moment when mm-hmm. I was teaching them as sixth graders. Okay, but um, somehow Bree Debo'd it, and um, and even the other girl Taylor makes that joke all the time. You wouldn't even let me get close to Miss Thomas because mm-hmm. that's what I was back then. But yeah, um, so it was kind of like, <laughs> and that situation I guess it was survival of the fittest. But mm-hmm. like she just kind of really debote the and let situation. Them know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the ball. She did like all the way down to when they got to choose their favorite teacher at mm-hmm. the end of the school at the end of their school career. Right. Um, she was like, no, I'm choosing Keisha. Mm. Y'all can't. So it was really just like Debo-ish. But then, you know, I started my girls mentoring group. Mm-hmm. So then. did Were there any that stuck out from that group, though? That oh, yeah. That you made your own and continued. Yeah. With? And I think it's the ones who I saw myself in. Mm-hmm. Whether that was a bad, act, like I used to have bad attitude, mm-hmm. like in middle school, I mm-hmm. really I did. See it. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever. <laughs> um, but I knew that I was driven. I knew I was different. So I kind of, even with my girls' group, I aimed. 